All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Honor, and welcome to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. All right, we are talking about Etsy infringement. If you're a seller, like on Shopify or Etsy or eBay uh, or Facebook Mark, any, any place, any platform that allows third-party content, okay? Etsy is a big one. Etsy, I lo absolutely love Etsy. It's one of my favorite sites. My wife loves it, Frontline Lisi. So, um, but let's say, what do you do? What is the strategy when you find somebody else infringing on your copyright protected content? Well, without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. All right, so we're here talking about Etsy infringement. Say you create photos or you create videos, you have drone video footage, or, or what we see a lot of on Etsy is just cute um, copyrightable products. Like there was a case that, and in fact, this is what I'm talking about on my blog, fairy wings. There was a case dealing with fairy wings where the, you know, fairy wing is an original, I guess you could say it's an original work of authorship, depending on what it looks like and everything, fixed in a tangible medium of expression. And so therefore it qualifies for copyright protection. So in this case, and the one I'm talking about in the new strategy that I'm seeing here, in the copyright world, we don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to certainly keep an eye on it, is this 512F false claims uh, for bad faith takedown notices or bad faith counter notices, okay? Now, the typical process is this. If you know nothing about takedown and notificate, counter notifications, things like that. So if you have... Um, content on one of these third-party sites let's say etsy so etsy over here has a uh, etsy has a dmca agent okay so you sign up and you pay a few bucks and you get a dmca agent that gives you safe harbor why etsy doesn't want to get sued because you guys have some dispute over copyright they don't want to be any part of this so in order to get the what we call safe harbor protections they have appointed and created a designated agent. Any, anybody can do that. Any site that hold, um, houses an online service provider that houses on, online third-party content, okay? Anything that could be um, copyrighted. And that, there's a lot of things that could be copyrighted. Architect, plans, you know, jewelry can be copyrighted. So um, computer fonts, software, I mean, so many things that are creative works of authorship fixed in a tangible medium of expression can be subject to copyright. All right, so here's the general process. So they're immune, they're gonna follow, they're gonna follow this general procedure so that they keep their immunity, their safe harbor, they don't want any liability. You guys figure it out, that's their attitude, okay? So you find somebody infringing, in this case, a seller on Etsy saw her infringing or, or her copyrighted fairy wings being infringed by another company selling the exact same wings, okay? So there's a question of whether there was access and substantial similarity. That's usually the test we're looking for here. And so this seller said, you know what? I'm not gonna stand for it. I am going to file my DMCA takedown notice to try to get the competitor to, to get Etsy to take down the competitor's website or the infringing content, shall we say. So the first thing you want to realize as a seller or a copyright holder, when you send that DMCA takedown, make sure that you have considered fair use, okay? A lot of courts now are looking for this. For, fair use is a exception to copyright infringement. So if you can show that you have a fair use, there's no copyright infringement, okay? So courts are now, uh, and then the Ninth Circuit where I practice law, California, Arizona, um, they're saying you need to consider fair use before sending down the DMCA notice. So if you don't know what fair use is and you've never even heard of the concept, you should get probably a fair use opinion from a copyright lawyer and get this figured out before you're sending this notices. You don't want to go from the good guy to the bad guy, right? And so if you send this DMCA takedown notice, it goes to the alleged infringing party. The alleged infringing party can say, you know what? That's fine. I'm just going to take it down. They caught me. Let's just, let's just be done with it. Or as I show here, you can try to negotiate a deal like, hey, you know, I came up with this all on my own. I have my own fairy wings. I know it looks close, but I came up with the idea all by myself, independent creation. 
So the two can work out a deal, but a lot of times that's not really on the board. So I'm going to cross that out. So the counter notification needs to contain what we call an attestation. You're basically saying, I believe in good faith, dear Etsy, that there is a misidentification or a mistake made by the plaintiff here. Okay, we're not the plaintiff, but the copyright holder, the moving party, shall we say. They're, try they're saying there's an infringement. There's so you're saying, I believe in good faith. I believe in good faith that there's not an infringement, that it's a mistake or a misclassification, okay? So that's what you're saying. So you're making this, and this is all part of the DMCA law, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. This is all part of it, okay? So the notification, the counter notification, the affidavit, and you are consenting to jurisdiction, federal court jurisdiction, where you're located so if you're located in san francisco you are consenting to the central the excuse me the northern district courts in california if you're down in los angeles you're consenting to the central district courts if you're down in san diego you're consenting to the southern district courts, so forth and so on and it could be your state texas new york florida illinois whatever um, anyway, you are consenting to the jurisdiction. Now, what happens here? You send the counter notification, comes back here to the copyright holder, and they go, geez, they did a counter notification. Can you believe it? So now Etsy says, well, you know, we're going to put that back up because they're saying there, that there is no infringement. They're saying they're in good faith. There is no infringement. So we're going to put this back up. We're going to put the content back up, the competing fairy, fairy wings company. We're going to put it back up within 10 days unless you file a suit, a lawsuit, a federal court lawsuit. If you don't file a suit, it's going back, it's going back up, okay? So the, the copyright holder here has a decision. What do we do? Should we, A, should I just go ahead within 10 days, file the federal court copyright lawsuit, call Vondren Legal and say, can you file a lawsuit? Yeah, we can file a lawsuit. You're going to be looking at about 400 plus in filing fees, another $100, $150 in service of process fees, time to put the complaint together, the whole thing. So, but yeah, you can file a lawsuit. Problem with the lawsuit is it can take time. You can get into litigation. Someone can be fighting you, especially if you didn't consider fair use here. You could be, you could be in for a, uh, a very interesting lawsuit. So, uh, very important to consider this early on. But say you say, well, I don't want to file a lawsuit. That sounds like too much headaches. Um, I'd love to work with Attorney Steve, but man, that just sounds like a headache. So you say, well, that's off the board. And before, heretofore, there has never been really like a third option until the Copyright Claims Board came out. I told you guys all this was coming out. And um, this is in Washington, D.C. It, it is not a court. It is not judges, they're not federally appointed judges, they're not, they don't sit for life, there's not a jury trial, there's not, it's basically a digital dispute, okay? It's a digital dispute that you do. And what's going on now is we see this seller or sellers similarly situated filing what we call right here, this is our option we're looking at, filing a CCB 512F, as in Frankfurter. Uh, 512F as in Frankfurter is a bad faith DMCA case, okay? That means somebody's doing something under the DMCA law in bad faith, either filing this no notice, the counter notice, uh, the uh, DMCA takedown in bad faith, or filing the counter notification in bad faith, okay? So the 512F claim is what we see out in the Copyright Claims Board now. So the Copyright Claims Board is new. They've been out, I don't know, five, six months now. There's been like 100, 200 plus cases, not a whole lot of decisions. I haven't seen a whole lot of verdicts. Uh, make sure you subscribe because when verdicts come out, I am going to show you what the photographer is making, what the drone video for videographer is making, how much are they actually making. You can sue for up to $30,000, so it's a pretty uh, big deal. And also one of the neat things about this court is you don't have to have a copyright registration to file. You do have to file for registration at the same time as filing your complaint, but you don't have to actually um, have a copyright registration certificate. So that's what's going on. So this is kind of what it looks like in when we're dealing with selling platforms, e-commerce platforms, takedown notices, infringing trademarks, infringing copyrights, infringing 
uh, product packaging, things like that. And your takedown, counter notification, and your bad faith claims process. So you could also potentially bring these 512F claims it just right in federal court. It's just that you have to prove that they subjectively had bad faith. That's not always an easy uh, task. You ha would have to have some facts that show they knew they were doing this in bad faith. They knew this was improper. And I think this Copyright Claims Board is probably going to demand the same type of evidence, which we'll see. You know, we'll see how this all works out. But again, uh, you can check it out. You can check out, go to Etsy, check out uh, Fairy, Fairy Wings for Kids. It's really cute. Um, but that's what's going on, guys. So that's what we, when you hear somebody saying, send a DMCA takedown, that's what they're talking about. When you hear, hey, you can file a counter notification, counter notice, that's what they're talking about, okay? YouTube, this happens all the time. All kinds of YouTube claims. So we are firm, Vonder and Legal. We help clients with the copyright cases, the, the notices, the counter notifications, you know, lawsuits, copyright claims board. So give us a call if you need some help. This is general legal information only and not legal advice. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. If you have a friend that sells on a platform for a living, you might want to send them this video. So if they don't understand the whole copyright process, intellectual property rights, they do now. This makes it pretty easy to break down how it all works, so forth and so on. So I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. I got to run, got a busy day. Take care. Bye now.